Okay, so as this is week one of my Redbubble adventure experience, I wanted to use only free resources to be able to try and facilitate growth and sale. I never want to pay for stuff until I've actually figured out and understood the platform, what's going on and how stuff works. Because essentially you might just be throwing money down a hole for no real reason. So I did additional promotion myself through Instagram. You can use paid bots. In my opinion, there's no use using the free bots. Um, but to advertise anything, I would need something to advertise. So that brings us around to designs. Now, Canva, if you've made YouTube videos yourself, this is probably where you started out with your thumbnails. It was for me. The great thing about Canva is that there is tons of free vectors that you can commercially use, providing that you make some change from the standard version listed on the website. So you'll be making your I Love Coffee t-shirt in no time. And speaking of I Love Coffee, that's what we would call an evergreen design. Because whether it's a Monday, a Tuesday, winter, summer, the dead of night, or the 18th century, it will always be true that someone loves coffee and that this idea and feeling isn't limited to certain parts of the year. Meaning, in theory, your sales won't only be seasonal. Now, the opposite is true of what would be a trending design. One which tries to take advantages of a trend within a certain time range, which has more chance to have a greater interest and exposure but only during that specific given period of time. One of those examples would be St. Patrick's Day, which I've been making designs for. Now, if you can't find sufficient vectors on Canva, there is a great website called Freepix, which offers loads of vectors provi providing you a tribute as required or to use the vectors without needing to attribute. Or pay to use the vectors without needing to attribute. Now, personally, I try and combine the two, looking on Canva for simple inspiration, then using vectors in combination with other images or editing techniques in Photoshop to create a new image. In terms of output, one of the channels I watch recommended 60 a day. Now, I have other stuff going on. I didn't really want to spend more than four hours a day on Redbubble stuff, so I decided to do 30 a day, which gives me something to work on for next week. Now, 30 a day is 150 in a five-day week, so that's what I make. But now I know where I can make my designs and how to make them. Where do I find what topics are likely going to be the best to sell? Well, there's a couple of different ways we can go about this. One of the more simpler ways is to simply go to the Redbubble search bar. You can find these tags trending just by, say, clicking on the box and typing in a letter. It will then auto-generate the trending search and you'll see that by a little upwards going arrow little bullish arrow and that tells you that that trend is trending or that tag is trending for higher quality trends you can use bubble spider now bubble spider is a website whereby you can mess around with different selections to identify what trends are the best trends for you what trends have low competition but but that are trending more and more than ever so mess around with the sliders on the screen and find some trends that you can work with. The best way for me to achieve 30 designs is by creating some and then having variations on that. Personally, I like to create variety by changing the color of my designs. I can create these variations quickly by just in the hue and saturation on Photoshop and boom, there's my 30 designs. You can do different stuff with overlays, underlays to create variations in your designs too. Based on some more advice I have, two different shops for two different niches I'm currently focusing on. It was meant to be three, but one of my shops got banned within 10 minutes of opening it. Luckily, I realised why, so it won't happen again, so make sure you watch the next section so that this doesn't happen to you, as it can be especially annoying just after you've spent like an hour trying to set up your shop, putting in all the bank account details, creating banner images, profile pictures, etc. Don't let what happened to me happen to you. Now, efficient uploading. No one covered this from what I could see. So here is where I leave my own mark of genius on this video. So with uploading, there's a few things that you need to be aware of. Every design requires specific product placement and choosing. So the advice I got was to take my time with this and to make each product look the best that you can on every product. 
so that every product has the best chance of selling well. Fair enough. Tag. Make now, there's two ways, the simple way and the advanced way. You want to just bung a bunch of tags in there that are sort of relevant, that will get you on a page, not the front page, but it'll get you to some, some point in the pages, then just use the Redbubble Tag Generator. This is an extension that you can download for Chrome and other browsers. And basically you type in the keyword, the tag that you want, and the tag generator will generate you a bunch of tags and copy and paste them into that tag box on the Redbubble website. But that will not get you on the front page of Redbubble. So the thing that I have seen that was recommended to me was to have a look specifically at the number one listed product within that tag. Have a look at that product, scroll down the page, have a look at the tags, make a note of all the tags, and then take those tags and use those tags on your product that is of the same ilk, genre, niche. But you need to be careful because here is where my account got terminated, right? So what I did, being pretty stupid, or well, not really stupid, I just didn't know, um, I used the Redbubble Tag Generator and I used that in conjunction with the second method. So I took all the tags from the best listing and also put the Redbubble generator tags in there thinking, well, more tags, better, right? Wrong. So basically Redbubble will only allow you to have a tag limit of 50 tags. So if you exceed that, there'll be issues. Generally speaking, I've done this on my other accounts and what happens is if you've already made listings and the account has been seen as legitimate already, they will cancel that listing. You will have to re-upload the picture, redo the tags, redo the title, select all the placement on products again, and you'll be good to go. But it still takes 10, 15 minutes, right? Now, on my new account, because it was my first listing that I was uploading, it was deemed as suspicious. And therefore, my account was immediately closed because I exceeded the 50 tag limit. So you need to be very careful on new accounts not to exceed the tag limit on your first post. Otherwise, you've probably just wasted a bunch of time. Now, here comes to the super efficient bit that no one else is going to tell you. So there is a part where you can copy your designs, copy settings. This I was told by Autopilot Investing. but. The thing that no one seems to mention is that when you do this, it actually takes ages. You click on the copy settings, you change the picture, you go down, you scroll, you click the bottom bit, and then you've got to change the title so it doesn't say copy of, and then save it at the bottom. Then it will upload. And then you've got to navigate back to the Manage Portfolio page, click on it again, copy it again. And it might not seem like a long time. When you're doing 10 designs at once and all those designs are the same, you're essentially wasting minutes and minutes on each design in between. So you can save yourself 20 minutes, half an hour when you're uploading simply by going to the bit where it says copy settings, right clicking it, then go and open a new tab and just spam open that new tab like 10 times or however many times your browser can handle or for images that you need to upload that is the same image, but perhaps say a different color, right? This will save you no end of time. And these are the sort of things that I like to do to try and squeeze the extra value out of what I'm doing and maybe turn an eight hour day into now, a four hour day. Advertising. So with any store, with any shop, you need traffic in order to generate sales. If no one comes into the shop, you can't sell even if your conversion rate is 100%, right? So we need to get traffic to the page through the form of advertising or marketing. So these can be external websites like uh, Facebook, it can be Twitter, it can be Instagram. Now, Redbubble does do a certain amount of advertising for you on these websites themselves. However, that is very limited and you don't want to rely entirely on Redbubble's advertising in order to bring traffic and generate sales for you because that is something that is completely out of your control. We must use self-promotion to market our products to reach a wider audience. If not, there's only two people seeing them. A, those who are searching on Redbubble, and B, those who see it through the advertising that Redbubble does. So with that, I had a look at free bots for Instagram and Twitter. I was looking at Phantom Buster, which is basically 
a bot that can do auto likes and auto follows, which hopefully should bring people to your page, which obviously has uh, listings of products, etc., which then might lead them through a funnel into the website to purchase your products. So what Phantom Buster does, auto likes, auto follows, but it requires you to already have a spreadsheet of this information to put into the bot so it can start doing its thing. For you to get this information, you will have to mess around for 25 minutes, half an hour, getting this information, figuring it out, unless you've already got bots and know exactly where you need to go to get this spreadsheet, to upload it to Google Docs, if you've got an account already, to then link it to <laughs> the bot so that it runs, right? So I spent time doing this and then realized that the bot would at maximum do five people every time it run. And the most often I could get it to run was once every 15 minutes. So it only did 20 people an hour or so it set. But after I checked after a couple of hours, it didn't seem to actually be adding the people anyway. So I just turned it off, drew a line under it because I could add 60 people in one minute on my phone with my thumb. So as much as you don't want to do this manual stuff, Sometimes it's quicker than fucking about. Like, honestly, if I wasn't messing about for 25 minutes and I just did one minute, 60 follows every time I did it, then it would be the case that, you know, I'd, I'd have 20 times 60 followers in terms of that dedicated amount of time. So that was a bit of a waste. But until you look, you don't know. And that's exactly why I'm making this video for you. And that's exactly why you should like and subscribe. So that I go through all the pain and you guys don't have to. So once I'm on Instagram, how did I go about finding the people that I thought were my demographic? So I simply went by the theory of finding followers of a group that would or should be interested in the product. So for example, on one of my shops, we are doing some products to do with International Women's Day. So I just searched International Women's Day. There was a couple of groups on Instagram, a couple of profiles that I could follow and look at their followers and then start following them. Because if I start following people that are interested in following International Women's Day, those same people might be interested in buying International Women's Day products. Maybe not, but you know, on, on, the, on the face of things, that's a simple way to get some people that might be interested. And for my other one, Crypto St. Patrick's Day, which I was doing on a different store, I went to BitBoy followers. Uh, the reason I did this, BitBoy is the number one in terms of subscribers, at least from what I know, crypto channel in America. Now, America has 31.1 million who identify as Irish, and Ireland only has 4.996 million people uh, that are Irish. So as a proportion, America actually has uh, like six or seven times more Irish people than Ireland. So if one third of America is Irish, then one third of BitBoy's 400k subscribers, so maybe 100k subscribers, uh, might be Irish by that demographic. So it seemed like a good place to start. Now, my advice to you when doing stuff manually on Twitter is to respect the like and follow limits, or you will get temporarily banned, which will be annoying when you're trying to do stuff, because it will have you frozen out your account for a period of time, not that long, but you will have to enter your mobile number to unlock Instagram as it thinks you are a bot which is ironic because the bots don't get caught, but the me, the real, the meat man does, like, quite funny. Anyway, um, I would need to upload posts with product pics for content so that when people come to the Instagram page, they can see it, they can like it if they do, and they can go to the shop in order to buy the product should they want it. Leave open the ending page after you've listed all your products. Underneath that page, when you've got the option to edit or view, there is also a list of all the products with pictures next to it. So what I would do is have on one side of the screen, you, your browser open with your tabs open, and on the other side, have a folder in your file explorer. And then what you can do is you can literally drag the pictures over into the folder, and then it saves them, right? Now, Something that you should bear in mind in this is I do believe that it is actually a different picture than the picture you would get if you went to promote products and then downloaded it that way. That will give you the highest quality picture. However, I found that it takes ages to load. So if I'm trying to do one product for each different color of the same type of product, right, it's going to take me like 10, 20 minutes to gather this information together, doing it that way to get the highest quality of images. 
You do it the other way, but you just drag them across, go to the other tab, scroll down a bit, get a picture of a t-shirt, drag it across, go to another tab, grab a mug, grab it, drag it across. Then it's taking you literally a matter of moments to fill up that folder, to be able to get the resources to create and post on Instagram to drive traffic to your site. Does it and doesn't take like 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, you might think, but Ben, I am sacrificing the quality of the images in order to get a little bit more speed. Is that worth it? And for the most part, I obviously think that compromising on quality is not a good thing. However, most people on Instagram are viewing this sort of content on their phone. So it doesn't exactly need to be 4K resolution, stunning, high definition picture. It just needs to be clear enough so that they can see the product in its rightful state and it needs to be attractive enough that it will cause them to buy it. It's sort of like athletes, right? Um, like you, you could run really, really fast. You could train a lot and you could run really, really fast. But to get that from, from, to get from the 95th percentile of runners to the 99th percentile of runners, it's probably harder than it is to get up to the 95th, even though that's a larger proportion of people, right? Because the gains that you can get are so small that to get those extra gains, the amount that you have to put in is way more than it would in the first bit which means that it's an unproductive use of... Now, the other way to get noticed on Redbubble is to increase the amount of favorites and follows on your Redbubble profile. And to do that, people must notice you. A great way to get people to notice you is by favoriting their products. Probably the newer one to give them incentive to check out your profile, favorite products, and get you further up the rankings. I also started messaging people that favorited my work to ask them how long it took them to get a sale and how many designs. Uh, no one told me to do this. Uh, I'm just nosy. That's all. So I'll make a video once I've got more data and more results on that because, you know, maybe I can start building up a realistic picture of what it would take, regardless of niche, for anybody to start and start making sales. So in a week, I've created two shops, created two Instagrams, got over 100 followers on Instagram between the two accounts, created 150 design and gathered over 200 favorites. On the work. Sales, the total traffic to my Redbubble site, now I've figured out how to see the traffic, is probably about 150. So that means my conversion rate is less than 1% at the moment, which I'm not sure if it's something that I'm doing wrong with uh, tagging, design, or marketing. Maybe it's the case that I'm just a new Redbubble store and I shouldn't expect results straight away, even based on a reasonable amount of effort and the consistency over time will lead to results. If you found any of this interesting, please like and subscribe. If you noticed anything I did that was stupid, wrong, or inefficient, please comment, tell me about it. I don't want to waste my time. You can help me out too. And if you're looking for crypto content or other ways to make passive income, then please check out the rest of my vids because they're not usually about Redbubble content. If you want to go to the king of Redbubble content, please go to Autopilot Passive Income, as he is the man I learned at least 70% of this from, and there will be another couple of honorable mentions on the screen. But for the most part, tagging, marketing, amount of effort, and the basic searching for niches, I all found from him. So much props to the guy. He's making some great content at the minute, and his channel is really growing. So if you've come to my channel and you haven't seen his videos yet, please head over there because they're far better than mine, far more detailed. He's been doing it for far longer and has successful.